In this video, I will go over the steps it takes to batch convert files out of Gerber Omega and into CorelDRAW or Memorial Designer. So the first thing that we'll do is click on our Start button and go and find the Gerber Omega file folder here under different programs. I've got Gerber Omega 5.0 on this machine and there's a file converter program there. So I'll go ahead and click on that. One thing that you'll need to do is set a save directory. So you can type it in here or click on these three dots and then you can go and choose a different directory. I'll go ahead and just choose, I, I created one earlier called Omega Conversion. So I'll go ahead and use that as my file folder to save them at. And we'll go to File and say Export. And then you would go and also find uh, the folder that you want to export the, the files from. In this particular instance I've actually gone ahead and copied a bunch of PLT files to the same folder, um, but more than likely you've actually got them somewhere else. So you just browse to the directory where you've got those files saved. If you want to do a bunch at a time, I would just click in here and hit Control A. That will select all, or you can check this checkbox up here and that will select all of them in your folder at a time. If you've got thousands and thousands of them, it might be better to either split them up into separate folders or uh, maybe just grab them you know, from a certain letter at a time. So you can go from one, drag down until you get to maybe another letter of the alphabet, hold shift and click on it, and that will select all of those at the same time. And that way you would know kind of where you were at before. But I've only got 206 or so in here, so I'll select all of them at the same time. Um, the export as, you would want to switch from PLT all the way up here to AIGSP. And then under the options, the ones that I've found that work the best is to uh, use vinyl colors, CMYK, and do Corel variants. And then just click OK on that and then you would just hit the export button and that will then go and open up each of those and convert it. I have found that after doing a few of these the file converter up here will actually say that it's not responding anymore. Um, at least in my experience that's what it's done. So if it does that don't worry too much it actually does keep going um, until it's completed one thing that you'd have to look out for is if there are things like this uh, smart edits or anything that messes up you'll have to go ahead and click OK on those so you can see as it's converting those files from PLT to AI I'll go ahead and open up File Explorer here and we'll go to our Omega Conversion folder and that way we can see uh, down here 261 so the item number keeps growing because it's doing more if I right click in the white section here we can say group by type and it will show us how many AI files we've got uh, versus how many Gerber plot files we've got so that's another way to make sure that it's continuing to to move along but if I go back to our file converter here, so you can see where it says not responding anymore. So it looks as if it's not actually doing anything, but it still is. So that's how you would batch convert from PLT to AI. And you can see that it still doesn't look like it's actually doing anything, even though the AI count is growing. So don't be too concerned if it... Uh, doesn't look like it's working. As long as your AI count is still going up, then you're you're going to be just fine. Okay, so it has gone ahead and completed all 203 of those. There were 203 Gerber plot files. So it's done all of those. Um, back over here, it finished up. The status bar went all the way across and it stopped staying, not responding. It didn't actually say that it was done or anything, but you can see from here that it was done. So if you wanted to do more, same thing, you would just uh, choose your save directory, go back up to file, say export, and start all over again with the same, same process.
I have found on my end that um, I've been able to do it at, at least a thousand at a time. Um, anything above and beyond that seemed to have given me a little bit of problems. So if you can break it up into maybe a thousand at a time, then I think you'll be alright. Now that we have all the files converted to Adobe Illustrator files, we'll then batch convert from those Adobe Illustrator files into Corel Draw files. So there's a file converter um, that you can get for Corel Draw. If you don't have it, you can go to Get More if you're in uh, Corel Draw 2017. And then under Extensions, you would come down until you get to the file converter here and then just click on this uh, there would be a link to to download it there um, so that would download it and then once it's downloaded you come to tools say macros run macro under macros in you would choose file converter and then just hit run on the converter dot start you need to choose your source files first, so you click source, and then we'll click on that again, go back to our C drive, go back to our Omega conversion folder, click OK. It's going to go ahead and search through all those files to see what it finds. It found both AI and PLT files. Uh, the PLT, we don't actually want to convert those because those are proprietary Gerber files, not, uh, not ones that Corel can open. So instead of all files, we're going to switch to just doing AI Adobe Illustrator files. That way it'll find all 203 of those. We say add all to add it to our selected list of ones we want to convert. Click OK. And then destination, you'll need to choose a destination for that as well. I'm going to go ahead and send it to the same folder. So we'll click OK on there. And for the convert to, we want to choose Corel Draw files. Choose your version number if you want something less than the current version. And if you want to, you can mess with these different options. Um, I myself don't really do any of these ones, so I just leave everything as the default. And then you just click OK. What that does is it will open up each and every one of those files one at a time into Corel Draw and then save it as a, uh, a Corel Draw file. So it'll take a little while to do. Um, once again, I have found on my computers that I can do about a thousand of these, a little less, maybe 900 or so, um, before for some reason it actually um, will crash Corel Draw. So I, I think it might be a, a memory thing that it just ends up using too much memory after a while. but. Anyway, so you want to do this when you're not doing anything else, uh, just in case it crashes, and also because you really can't use Corel Draw while it's doing the conversion process anyway. I'm going to see if I can scoot this over a little bit. You'll see as it opens up these files, uh, some of them look right where they're black, and that's great. Uh, some of them I've noticed will come in a different color, like green or pink or you know, maybe a little different color, and I think that all depends on how it was drawn and filled in in Gerber to begin with, um, but I guess it also depends on, you know, who drew it and how it was done. So all this is going to do is convert it uh, from the Adobe Illustrator to the Corel Draw file. Once it's converted, there's actually a little bit more um, that I would do in order to get it to to be the way that I want. So I'll go ahead and hit exit. I'll see if I can break out of this. I'll just abort that. So once we've got them converted to Corel Draw files, I would say open. And then we'll go and find the files here. So we'll go back to Omega Conversion. And this time I'll open up the Corel Draw file. I'll hit open. And that will then go ahead and open that up for me. Normally, what I would do is I would uh, choose, select it, and hit my fill grayscale button. That would then take all of these inside pieces, combine them together, and turn them 10% gray, and leave just this outside line black. 
this text down here. If I wanted to keep it, I would select all of that text, combine it together. It's not actually text anymore because it gets converted to curves. But if I wanted to keep it in the file, I would go ahead and do that. If not, I would just delete it and then go to File and say Save As. That way I can get to uh, the tags here. If you don't see tags, you may need to drag this up a little bit in order to get to where it will show tags. But I like to save all of my files with tags so that I can say Masonic, Emblem, stuff like that. So if I go and search for it later on, I'll actually be able to find it. And then you just say save. Yes, I'll overwrite the original. And then I would close that one and go to the next one. I can go ahead and sort by type if I want to, um, or once again group by type. I'm just right clicking to get to those menus. And if I needed to, I could see extra large icons. So I can see this one I've already done. And these ones here, you can see other different colors. So those ones obviously have not been completed yet. But I'll just go ahead and click on the next one and do the same thing and go all the way uh, throughout all these. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit because I saw or I noticed I think there was a problem with the one. All right, so this one with the horse heads. I'm going to open that one up and see how that looks. So if we don't select anything and hit fill grayscale it asks, asks us to select something. So I'll just double click the pick tool to select all and then I will hit fill grayscale. I'm going to hit V to go to my wireframe view and it looks like something's not quite right here. So let's see what's going on there. Maybe I'll hit my DXF fix button see if it would fix that. No. Uh, here we go. Alright, so the reason that this one didn't actually fill correctly is because this little line here is actually going a little bit below that. So if I drag that up a little. Now if I went to fill this back in again it should work correctly. So fill grayscale, what it does is it looks for um, any objects that have other objects completely inside of them and then it will take all those inside objects and combine them together. But because this one had it was going a little bit beyond um, the outside of, of that, that outer line there, that's why it didn't combine that together. So depending on how things are drawn, you may or may not have to make some edits. Fill grayscale also doesn't know that, you know, maybe these things here ought to show through to the polish. So you'd have to use knockout for stuff like that to knock those out to show through to whatever's behind it. And hit escape to end your knockout. Um, and then we'd go up to file and save as. And now we'd type in our tags as to what was in that file. But that's how I go about getting all of my artwork converted over from CorelDRAW, or sorry, from Gerber Omega into CorelDRAW files. And I'll just go ahead and tag this. I'm not really sure exactly what other emblem that is, but we'll go ahead and tag it and say save. That way I can show you if I go to open here, now if I search, I can just type in a horse and it will go and find that that folder um, or that file if it has been indexed uh, with Windows indexing. So if I click on my search bar here and type in index options, I'm going to say modify on my places to index, click on the little arrow and type in Omega Conversions. I'll just check that checkbox there and click OK. Because I'm on the root of the hard drive um, and not within like the My Documents folder, it's not really searching for those folders. So I went ahead and clicked OK 
and now you can see my indexing folders is now um, added more and now my indexing is complete so now that it's complete I should be able to type in horse and it will pop up that tag there so it all depends on whether or not you've got things indexed um, whether you've got them tagged or not and that sort of stuff so anyway um, I hope that helps and let me know if you run into any problems.